Here I'd like to share one of my favorite proofs in differential geometric algebra, which is the Dirac operator decomposition reveals roto reflections. And this can be broken down into two separate parts. And the first part is the one that's particularly interesting for me. And this is the theorem where the first grade sandwich product is a reflection. And so when we have a reflection by a hyperplane, such as the complement of Nabla, that has the isometry omega O slash Nabla, which is this symbol combination is defined as negative Nabla backslash omega times nabla and what the backslash just means is that there's a division going on but it's on the left side of the expression so we're inverting nabla and then doing the geometric product to multiply them together but since it's on the left side of the expression the division has to be a backslash and that's why it it's uh, written like that and in order to you know simplify all that notation to avoid having to remember all that that's why omega o slash nabla is supposed to be like a simpler no notation which means we have omega and we have nabla and we do an operation called o slash on them and that's supposed to be a reflection basically and that's that's a theorem that it's a reflection and that this is isometry and the way i can uh, ex prove this is basically we let nabla be grade one element then omega equals nabla you know divided by nabla times omega that's just kind of multiplying by one but we've introduced more symbols and we can apply the associative property and reparenthesize the expression and when we start doing things like that we end up with a different expression and we can now have nabla backslash d omega plus boundary of omega and if you recall from our previous theorems that's an application of the Dirac operator and the decomposition of that which was d omega plus boundary omega which is also a geometric product of nabla times omega and due to the way we have now restructured the way we write omega by introducing this expression which was initially just multiplying by one we have now expanded it out and written it in a completely different way and what's particularly interesting about this new construction is that nabla is parallel to the boundary of omega and nabla is also perpendicular to d omega and if we understand that we can do the reflection and we can understand that we reflect by flipping the component that's perpendicular. And so we reflect across the hyperplane, which is the complement of Nabla. So let's do that. So we want to prove this by doing the reflection and then getting the expression back that we want to prove, basically. So what we want to prove is that this expression up there is a reflection by hyperplane from that the element omega using this hyperplane that's the complement of nabla basically. So we take the expression of omega that we have and we apply the reflection and we now have a different expression, which is nabla backslash d omega minus boundary of omega. 
and now we multiply this expression by 1 again we do the same trick all over again that we just did before and we rearrange things with the associative property and by rearranging things a bit with knowledge of the geometric product and by applying knowledge of the Dirac operator once again d omega plus boundary omega we can replace that with the product of omega and a nabla and since that right there was a nabla squared which we got from rearranging the product before we now end up with minus nabla backslash omega times nabla and that's the expression for reflection by hyperplane so we can kind of have an algebraic proof that the reflection by hyperplane complement of nabla has this isometry omega o slash nabla where omega o slash nabla is the minus nabla backslash omega times nabla why does this matter and why go through this weird proof that shows that reflection by a hyperplane can be expressed in terms of this formula. Well, this is the same formula which generalizes and using that formula, we can express the carton diodone roto reflection decomposition, which is a theorem which has been, you know, discussed in the literature of geometric algebra and in other various places before and um, so if we have this foundation of differential geometric algebra which we've been talking about and we take this theorem which i just showed you and proved for the reflection by a hyperplane which results in the grade one sandwich product formula that can be composed in several layers so that every isometry from the vector space v to itself is the composite of at most k reflections and so that's what the carton diodoni reflection theorem says and the way we can express it in terms of a formula is using this o slash notation where omega o slash nabla one and then composed with O slash nabla 2 and so on up to nabla k is equal to omega O slash of the geometric product of nabla 1 times nabla 2 up to nabla k. And so what this helps us understand is that we can express the decomposition of every isometry into a composite of at most k reflections by observing the formula for reflection and nesting it several times. And that's why the theorem which I proved above was particularly interesting. And I don't think I've seen a proof of this theorem before. This is my original kind of insight about how you can prove that a reflection by a hyperplane has a isometry and this uses the uh, Clifford Dirac product decomposition d omega plus boundary omega as kind of a uh, application and that's why I thought this was an interesting theorem to take a look at because when you apply that repeatedly, that's the carton diodone ref roto reflection decomposition theorem when you express it in that way. And you can uh, think about that, check that for yourself. It's not just computational language that has to be implemented, but it's mathematical theorems and definitions and axioms that have to be satisfied that 
it's necessary to look at the mathematical foundations and the theorems and to think about the proofs a little bit. What that leads to is the uh, design of the computational language I ended up with and I put into my code repository on GitHub, grassman.jl. And um, I've now written a paper about it and included a bunch of the theorems and some of the information discussed in this presentation is all included in the paper about the foundations of differential geometric algebra. It's called graspan.jl for a reason because the emphasis in my uh, program is to try to satisfy the original Grassman laws and help from that derive the correct understanding, making sense of things in the world. And that's why I um, created this uh, Julia package, grassman.jl, which is available on GitHub. And these fundamental mathematical principles, they're universal. So these things have to be understood before they can be transmitted further. And there has to be a little bit of rigor behind it. And that's why we have taken a look at some of the theorems. I'm just trying to provide my perspective of how I how the foundations should be constructed for foundations of differential geometric algebra and Grassman.jl is a particular implementation of that in computational language which manifests these uh, abstract concepts I talked about in computational language and using that I verify my thoughts about it Please help sponsor and fund this research and development project. There is a need for funding of mathematical research project outside of academia.